In this video, we're going to be having a look at the timer function inside Home Assistant. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surrey's Tech, and today we're going to be having a look at the timer function inside of Home Assistant. We'll create some helpers, have a look at the timer itself, and create an automation to make it run. So let's get going. So the first thing we're going to need is some helpers. So we'll head into Visual Studio Code. We're going to need a number of things. So we are going to need an input boolean, We are going to need an input number. And that's going to be done in minutes. We are going to need... And then we're going to need a timer itself. Now we don't have to set a duration here, but I'm going to just so there's a default. I'll just set it to a minute. Right, uh, with that done, we can then restart Home Assistant. We don't have to restart the whole of it. We need to restart our numbers, our booleans, and our timers. We can then check our developer tools. We've got a number, a boolean, and a timer. Fantastic. We can now head into Node Red and create an automation. In here, we want a an event state node. Come on. We need a current state node. We need a function node and a cool service node. We're also going to need a delay. That's not a delay, every time a delay node and a cool service node. Link them all up. Okay, so the event state node is for the input boolean. If the timer is on, we then delay five seconds and turn the timer off. We then get the current state of the time and duration. And then we just need to multiply it by 60 because it'll assume that that's the seconds, but we're actually wanting to do it in minutes. So we do message.payload equals message.payload times 60, let me return that. And then we need to call the service and it's going to be a timer, start timer for timer.timer. And then in the data, we need a JSON expression and we're going to fill this with duration payload. And that is how we trigger our timer. And now if we head back into our Lovelace, we can create a new we can create a new card 
just a simple entities card and in it we're going to have our timer duration, our timer boolean and our timer timer. And if we set this to, for example, let's get out of edit mode. If we set this to one, then we can hit the timer and we can see that it starts the timer. And after five seconds, it'll turn boolean off so it's ready for next time. So that's great. But what happens at the end of the timer? Well, there are two things you're probably want, going to want to do at the end of a timer. One is tell you there's an end of a timer. And the other thing is possibly increase a counter. So we don't have any counters yet. So let's go in and create one. So back into our configuration, create a counter, call it timer counter, initial is zero, step is one. Simple as that. Then we just need to restart our counters, which don't happen independently, so we're going to have to restart the whole of Home Assistant for that to work. Okay, and when Home Assistant is back, we can quickly check that our counter is there, and then we can head back into Node Red. Okay, so then we need to create another flow, and this is going to use an event all thing node, a switch node, and a call service node. Actually, we're going to have two call service nodes. Link them all together. So our events all is going to be looking for timer.finished. We then need a switch node. Now we're going to be looking for message.payload.entityID. And the reason we're doing that is because if we put a debug node in here, we deploy it and reset our timer going. Then in approximately 56 seconds time, Alright, so the timer has finished and we've got a debug in here, entity ID timer.timer, which is the name of our timer. So we go into our switch, message.payload, because this is the payload, entity ID, and we want it to be timer.timer. .timer. And of course, if your timer is called something else, you'd change it to timer.washing or timer.fishing or whatever your timer's for. Um, whatever it's called at least. And now we can call our services. So I'll delete the payload. So our first call service is going to be for the counter. And we want to increment it. And we're just going to increment it by one, because that's the step of the counter. So every time the timer goes off, the counter increments. And then we want to do a notification. So we do notify. Actually, let's do a persistent notification. So this will pop up on in Home Assistant rather than directly to, to a device. And in the data, oh dear, in the data we want some JSON and we just want it to say, that's not right, and we just want it to say message timer ended simple as that we can then deploy that head back into here we may actually wish to put our counter in here and then we trigger our timer and we can see that when the timer ends, our counter has incremented by one, and we have a persistent notification. If we do it again, 
incremented again, and another persistent notification. Happy days! So depending what the, you're using this timer for, you could set this timer to automatically start when you put a washing load on, and then automatically stop a set period of time later, maybe two hours later, because you know how long the washing takes. And then you could use that to decrement a counter that counts how many washing tablets you've got left or how much detergent you've got left. Um, so you know when to buy more. So another option could be if you've got kids and you want to give them a short amount of time on you know, a phone or something during the day, um, and you want to only do that three times a day or five times a day or whatever, and you can see when the counter goes up to five and they've been on the phone five times a day for that set duration. Um, so there, are, as you can see, there are plenty of different possibilities uh, to be making use of this timer. So there we go, a very basic timer and counter inside of Home Assistant with a persistent notification. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.